Hi, I'm Peter Turner. I'm the co-founder and partner at Customer Frame. We're a customer strategy anti-consultancy. We help businesses close that gap between strategy and operations by putting the customer at the heart of everything they do. So today, Jacob's asked me to talk about one of my favorite topics. It's how do you get a crystal ball for your business? We spend so long looking backwards, how do we look forwards and predict the future? Today, I'd like to give our flavor of that from a customer's perspective. So let's start with a known fact. Customers are the ultimate reason that we're in business. So at the end of the day, in our businesses, are you actually measuring your performance from their perspective? Do you actually track from the customer's view how well you're doing? Unfortunately, the P&L just doesn't cut it here. The P&L only looks backwards. So generally, interestingly, we always go to satisfaction first. It's the go-to of the noughties and the nineties about how to measure our customer performance. Unfortunately, it's pretty limited. Um, it only measures a moment in time. So for example, I can be satisfied right now, and in a minute from now, my satisfaction can, can be completely the other way, and I can be dissatisfied. So take an example, everyone's seen it. You've seen it before, the five-star rating, and when you have that exit survey in the hotel, that exit survey, it's too late. You've left, you're gone. And in this day and age, it hits TripAdvisor, it hits those social media reviews, even before you can do anything about it. It's too late. So imagine if you could predict the future performance of your business using your customers as the input. This is where we shift out of satisfaction and we head towards advocacy. Advocacy is looking at the future propensity and the future intent of our customers. Are they likely to actually work with me in the future? So the basic simple is, if I can put my reputation on the line to go and tell others to use you, I'm pretty likely that I'm going to stay with you for the future and I probably won't stray to your competitors. Customers are complex beasts. This doesn't have to be put in the too hard basket. Let me show you how. Every business has three types of customers. You have assassins, you have apathetics, and you have your advocates. Let's talk about these in a bit more detail. Your advocates starting at this side, knowing how many you've got in these buckets is important. With the advocates, it's about, these are the people that are out there actively talking about you. They're waving the flag for you out in the field. At the barbecue on the weekends, they're proactively telling everyone about you. It's like having an extension of your sales force. This is an amazing asset to have in your business. The question I have for you now is, do you know how many you have? What proportion do you have? Let's move down the train a little bit to the apathetics. These are the apathetics that, look, they're probably satisfied with what you're doing in your business. They're probably reasonably happy, but unfortunately there's nothing to take them out of that and step them up again to be able to go, I'm going to actively talk about you, I'm going to promote you and move into that advocacy space. So we talk about these apathetics being the general, the, the happy crowd, the people that are often missed in the, in the process. I'll talk a little bit later about why this is one of the most dangerous groups for your business today. The third area, and this is the one that people always get energetic about, are the assassins. These are the people that are actively kneecapping you in the marketplace. They're going out of their way to tell anyone and everyone who'll listen about their experience with you and why you shouldn't go and do work with that business. Be it a poor customer experience, being at poor service, a failed product, they tell the world quickly. Obviously, at a pretty high level, folks, you don't want many of these in your business. So in customer strategy, we used to have this metric and I wanna blow this one away today a little bit. We used to talk about happy customers. You know, these, these advocates used to tell, on average, four people about their great, great experience with your business. What we found also is that, same research, that the assassins will go and tell 12 people. So these will tell four, but these will actually go and actively tell 12. Now we've got this thing called social media that you may have heard of, a bit of a phenomenon in modern business. Well, with social media, take that four times and 12 times, it's word of mouth on crack. I'm hoping by this point that I've actually convinced you a little bit that 
Customers are kind of important to your business. They're the ultimate reason they exist, and we really need to understand how many we have in these three buckets. They don't fall outside of those three buckets for any organization or business. So let's work this through. If I've got a high level of advocates, the reality is I probably have a business in six months' time. I have a positive future. Conversely, if I have a whole bunch of assassins, your, your business probably won't even be there by the end of this episode. But let's remember back, I said about these apathetics, that sort of hidden danger in the middle, the silent group, the unnoticed. They're satisfied, but they can switch in an instant. There's nothing holding them there. The old satisfaction metric that you might even be running today in your business from the noughties and nineties actually doesn't help you here. We need to be able to move beyond that. It's no longer enough. We've got to think about what can we do around advocacy. This is where a customer strategy can really help your business. Convert these people that are sitting in that middle, that apathetic group, and of course deal with each of these different areas, but actually make these people link to you for life. From our perspective, the customer strategy and the customer is boss in your business. It's the ultimate reason. But seriously, thinking about your business today, how many do you have in each of these buckets? Who are they? What do they need? These are the sorts of questions that you can get to quite quickly by changing and reframing your mindset away from looking backwards in your business, using the crystal ball to look forward, and actually measuring your customer performance, performance that is your performance from their perspective. Today, we've only scratched the surface on this topic. There's much more to share with you. It's a very simple yet powerful way of thinking about our customer base in business. If you need some more help on this, please reach out. Come back through to Business Depot, come to Customer Frame directly, and um, we can help you get this crystal ball into your business and take you to the next level. Thanks for your time.